Hello everyone, my name is Jacqueline, I'm the awards editor at Rotten Tomatoes and I'm so excited to bring to the stage the cast and the filmmakers of the brilliant film you just saw. So up first, please help me welcome here Mr. Robert Eggers, the co-writer and director. Stars, Mr. William Defoe. <laughs> and last but not least, we have an actor on this beautiful piece, Mr. Robert Pattinson. <laughs> Gentlemen, um, first of all, everyone in this audience right now, I've been where you are, where you're just like, <laughs> what was this bad shit thing I just saw? <laughs> it's brilliant, but what did I see? So, Robert, I'm going to start with you because um, you made this bad shit thing, and it's brilliant, but I just, I wonder, like, what about it, because you wrote it with your brother, and the fact that you guys are doing a lot of flatulence, two guys living in a room, kind of, maybe they don't like each other, and the masturbation. I just feel like there's some childhood stuff you're working out for this one. I'm, I'm gonna guess. No, no, no. Uh, Max and I get along very well, um, uh, but um, because I'm older, I definitely was the Defoe to his Pattinson, Pattinson for sure. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, we, we've never been lighthouse keepers on a 19th century lighthouse station. Uh, so there was a lot of research involved. Uh, but, you know, there are certain autobiographical things that you have to put into any piece in order for it to work. And uh, it was really when I was um, working in the, the dregs of the New York indie film world that I uh, was often in, uh, you know, sleeping in close quarters with uh, flatulent colleagues. Yeah, um, anyone that's ever shared a room unwillingly, I, I feel your pain. Uh, the next thing I want to ask you, because you talked about the research of it, the film is so detailed. It is just, I don't know how to put it, just incredibly vivid and vibrant, and every like frame feels like it has thought and intention behind it, and I know that's not by accident, and I know that it's in the DNA of the script, so what was the research process? And I want you to talk particularly about the painter I know that you pulled a lot from. There was a, a painter that you guys like kind of maybe researched too? Well, um, yeah. So, I mean, there's, a, uh, I, I've said before, there's a lot of, um, it's easy to research lighthouses uh, and, and because people like lighthouses. So there's tons of books available. Uh, and, uh, and, and also, thankfully, unlike The Witch, um, there, you know, pho photography had been invented in the 19th century, so th there was lots of photographic evidence to uh, recreate the um, <clears throat> the physical and material world. Um, but you know, my process and 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 my brother's process on this movie is so research based that anything can help uh, tell the story and inspire a scene. So, uh, 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 you know, the. In, in 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 the the manual, the lighthouse keeper's manual that that Robert's character mentions and 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 it reads in, in the book, uh, you know, has talks about how, how many rations of uh, of of salt cod and and beans they're supposed to have. That can inspire a scene. Uh, how you're supposed to clean the cistern in that manual can inspire a scene. Uh, but uh, as we w we're, we're looking at so many different things, uh, like Melville, for example, because it's New England and and in uh, the nineteenth century and nautical setting, he's inspiring stuff, which made us realize that <clears throat> Defoe's sea spells are going to have allusions to classical mythology, and from classical mythology, that starts leading us into symbolist painting, which starts leading us into like Jean Delville and Arnold Buckland and Sasha Schneider. Is that who you're talking about, yeah. Schneider? Yeah. yeah. So there is a there is a like I trying to best as best I can take my influences and and uh, and digest them. Uh, in, in through some alchemical process into something new, but in the image where Defoe is spoiler alert naked, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> you know shining his his light in, into uh, Rob's eyes, <clears throat> <laughs> 
there was no alchemical process there. I was I was pretty much stealing that from an image by the symbolist painter Sasha Schneider, uh, but it was too good of an image not to use. Um, if you guys cannot tell by listening to him go into that, the, just the details of that, that that's the reason why like, you watch this film and it feels like a documentary. It doesn't even feel like a narrative fiction or a period piece. Um, and Willem, I know that's you know, part of the reason why you were attracted to work with Robert, but the thing I think you have like a hardest time with is the language because that can go cartoonish so quickly and and poorly but i know you guys had a guide for that in in your research so yeah talk about finding uh the voice me yeah um well one of the beautiful things when i first read the script was that language because it's very rare in a movie that you get to uh, play with elevated language like that uh, poetic language uh antiquated language, full of slang and, and really juicy images. So that became very important. Of course, you have to learn how to, uh, I had to find the rhythm, I had to find the music, because really the meaning is expressed through the music. So you've got to practice that to find out what it is, and then you've got to make it like it's normal speech because you don't want it to disconnect from the story and become like a party piece or a show-off thing, you know? It can't disconnect, so it has to still function in our conversation as if this is the way we talk, which is a tricky thing. But it's beautiful, because it's just like when an actor uses a mask, sometimes when you use something artificial, you it, it lets out something that you could possibly not uh, release without that mask. So it becomes a weird kind of device and another way to reach a uh, uh, deeper kind of communication. The writing's very good for me. I, I mean, I like it a lot, and the images are so evocative. So that puts you in a whole world. You get a sense of it when I'm just listening to him now talk about his research. Imagine being immersed in that and having him give you all that material you start to enter a world, and then you experience it physically. Then you deal with this language. It takes you further and further away from yourself, and then you have these things to do. Uh, you have an experience. You have an experience that um, you learn something, and you have a shift of how you think and how you feel, and that's really powerful. And then hopefully that'll be transparent enough that the audience will feel that experience that is happening. So for an actor to be in a situation with a director like this that is so articulate, so rigorous, and is so connected to another time is very cool. And, and yeah, yeah let's, round of applause for that, definitely. <clears throat> and you know, the, the three of us in the film at large, uh, we're lucky to have Defoe uh, playing this character because his dialect and accent are, is, is very researched. Uh, but like, you know, uh, in the hands of someone else, it, it is the sea captain from The Simpsons or Grandpa Dog from Peppa Pig. And it takes, you know, Defoe to make pull. you believe, <laughs> to believe the reality of this very researched uh, thing. <clears throat> Luckily, I've never seen those things or heard those things. <laughs> Otherwise, I would be pissing myself while I did it. <laughs> no, you were not from the dude from Peppa Pig. I was just thinking, I was like, oh my God, that is such a deep pull. I can't believe I would have, I would have never thought of that. Um, but Mr. Pattinson, I'm going to go to you because you guys made it hard for me. You're both named Robert. Um, this, this film, I know for a fact, like, <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and say it, like, Robert said in the last Q&A how you guys had met on some other things and maybe he was interested in casting you in some stuff, but it was this script in particular when he sent it to you, you came back with this just like anxious vibe, like I have to do this and I know it's probably because that script was as brilliant as the script for The Witch, which is another film that Robert made, his first one that was brilliant. But talk to me about that meeting and you have to tell this crowd about that YouTube video. <laughs> You guys are going to love this. I can't repeat the same anecdote. No, you have to tell them about them. That was when Robert surprised me because I'd <laughs> forgotten my first meeting with him. And I, about this movie. And now I've remembered where it was from. Oh, I used to be... <laughs> See? <laughs> well, um, a lot of my research for all of my parts is from an Instagram called Drunk People Doing Things. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> 
And, uh, and there was this one guy who, <laughs> I don't know why, I read this very, very erudite, beautifully articulate script. And then when I came back, my first thought was to show this, pic this video of a guy kind of rolling on ecstasy, um, saying, screaming at another guy in a club, saying, I'm going to teach you how to fuck. I'm going to teach you how to fuck. <laughs> and I showed it to Robert, and I was like, this is the guy. <laughs> and <laughs> and, uh, and he, he was right. <laughs> though, though the funny thing is, at the last Q&A, I thought he was saying, I am a demon. Uh, uh, so, you know, I don't know what that says about uh, how, how uh, what's inside me and what's inside Rob. No, I mean, look, they're happy at they have this information now. Trust me, they're all going to look yeah, up that Instagram. Can find that video as well. Please yeah. kind of promote it somewhere because I actually tried to find it in the car on the way here and I couldn't find it again. If you try to Google teach me how to fuck videos. <laughs> and like, it really you go brings, down a different brings up path. a lot of stuff. <laughs> but, but not to just, you know, stick on the YouTube video, but Rob, you know, you had such early success in your career and you were very vocal in saying that like after that you could do whatever you want. And I know for a fact, not like, <laughs> not Actually, whatever. I I'm hijacking this. I've been wanting <laughs> to know this. For a long time, and but I don't want to bring up Harry Potter and Twilight, like you know, but like, did you? Did, Why not? <laughs> I'll, I'll, you know, you you can do it, but 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 like, okay, if I was uh, want like like wanted to be in Claire Denis movies when I was a very young man, mm. like, and I got offered Edward and Twilight, I would fucking take that role hell yeah but did you always have more like arty like uh aspirations like or or were or were you in more interested even and then in doing more commercial cinema like when you got the twilight role yeah i mean in my head i'm always doing art house yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, 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 no matter, yeah. Like, literally no matter what but i just uh it's you know the audience really decides. <laughs> yeah, so sure. Like, but it, when I'm approaching it, like everything is kind of I want to push things as extreme as I can, and it's really just the rating and the director that to, would kind of stop you. I mean, it's kind of, I mean, I would make everything as strange as possible. Um, <laughs> oh, I love that but, so but, much. But you but know, isn't it true that when actors first start out, the first thing they want is just to work, and then once they're working then they want to work in good projects. And then once they're working in good projects, they want to work in good projects with people that you know really inspire them. Yeah. So that's I was, kind I of was, a natural progression. Yeah, but I was frightened of, because I, 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 I wasn't that certain I even wanted to be an actor at the beginning. And so mm -hmm. it's kind of, and so I was kind of thinking, there was a part of me was thinking like, you could really embarrass yourself on such a scale that you wouldn't even be able to be a dentist afterwards. <laughs> like, like, so like, I was Hell so no, like, you're not going to take my <laughs> cavity. I saw you in that movie. <laughs> but but you know you know like uh, I was aware of it. Though. <laughs> you know when I when I um, when I when I said hey Defoe, uh, here's a script. It's you and Pattinson. Uh, do you want to do it? And he said. Who? No, no, he 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 he, he was like, hmm, hmm, uh, you, you know, like he had a similar reaction to me. He was like, he was like, I, he's mysterious. Even in the Twilight days, I I thought he was interesting and and mysterious and 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 like because. Uh, yeah, you just you know, always had and the good face. Yeah, Listen. no, but it's not. It's not. It's not just. Obviously, you're beautiful, but 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 there is something really special. I didn't say beautiful. I said a good face. <laughs> uh, and then with with Rob, I said, okay, so do you want to do this? You and Defoe, and he said, Defoe could scare me. <laughs> did I say that? You did. Oh. Well, <laughs> all I will say, well, okay, gentlemen. You said he's kind of small. But he could scare I did me. Don't say that either. <laughs> Y'all are getting all the inside stuff. And as I said in the last Q and A, the behind the scenes making of the lighthouse is probably just as interesting as the film we just watched. So, A twenty four, please make a featurette happen to detail all about all this greatness. No, 
This is the one thing I will say, Robert, and I don't want to forget it. Um, you married a lot of different camera techniques on this film, and it was a labor of love from like huge cranes to using 19th century type filmmaking process. So I know you did it because you wanted people to get excited about cinema. So real quick, get professorial on us real quick and tell us how you were able to put all these three things together and make like the end product. So if you like or don't like the cinematic language of my movie, uh, all two of them and some short films, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a collaboration between me and, and Jaron Blaschke, my, my DP. We work, we work very collaboratively. Thank you, Jaron. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, this, this movie's been kicking around uh, in, in some form of my imagination since 2011 or 13 or something like that. So Jaron and I have been talking about it for years. And, um, and, and, and we were somewhat limited to, like, and we knew we wanted it to be in a box, boxy aspect ratio, and we knew we wanted it to be black and white, and we had many ideas of what it could be. But, uh, but, but uh, you know, reality is reality, and sometimes that's, you, you just can't do any better than reality. So we would have wanted to have photographed this movie on orthochromatic film stock, uh, like early film stock of the 19th century, but you can't get that for motion pictures anymore. So we settled on Kodak Double X, which is a black and white negative that has not changed since the 1950s. And the blacks just kind of bottom out suddenly in a way that's very satisfying and it has a uh, really intense micro contrast. Uh, and then Jaron worked with Schneider to develop a, a filter which gave us an orthochromatic look. And, and, and the, 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 the broadest stroke about orthochromatic is basically it's not sensitive to red light. So all of anything red turns black. So all of the rosy hues and Caucasian skin tone turns darker. And you can see every blood vessel and vein and, and it makes these two gentlemen look more like salty semen. So when you wa look at Eisenstein's silent movies and all these Russians look super tan, that's because of the film stock. And the, and the Hollywood actors are using white pancake makeup to compensate for the film stock. Uh, and, um, you know, we were shooting from lenses from as early as 1905. Our main lens set was from the 30s, uh, and it has beautiful characteristics, and it helps give excellent close-ups to these four great cheekbones. And, uh, <clears throat> and, you know, I mean, look, like, but we tried stuff that we couldn't do. Uh, Jaron has a, has a developer that he created for his still photography, his still black and white photography that's superior to the baths uh, in, in, in a laboratory for motion picture film. So, uh, so we shot some test footage that Jaron um, processed in his bathtub that looked incredible, but you can't ensure a movie with Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe to be processed in the DP's bathtub. <laughs> but, but again, all this isn't just fussy, nerdy stuff. I mean, it is, but, <clears throat> but it's all to create a, an atmosphere. It's all to transport us further back into time to, to, to create an austere, bleak, unrelenting, uh, black and white world uh, uh, of, 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 you know, lighthouse keepers. Uh, so, so it's all uh, for a reason, not just because uh, we're, we're huge nerds. I mean, I'm so enjoying that. Like, I want you to be huge nerds because the proof is in the pudding. Like, that is why that film feels, like, like I said, so tangible. And I enjoyed every minute of that. And I did that for me. So I hope you all liked it. Um, Rob, I'm going to ask you a question um, because I was there at the first uh, screening for this at the director's fortnight at Cannes, where this film won, I might add, the top prize. Um, and the first question of the Q&A was about research, and that was one of the greatest moments, even early in the morning, is like, you were like, yeah, I think we researched this for like three weeks, and it was great, and the Robert was like, it was a week. It wasn't that long, so I want you to talk about like, what was that rehearsal process like, and why maybe did it feel so long? Um, I think, uh, well. <laughs> well, it's because, Maybe you should talk about your psychic powers. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think it's partially fear, partially, I was kind of, yeah, it, it's, 
I don't know. There's, there's some. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I, keep, I feel always weird saying the same answer again. I'm sorry if anyone was in the last screening. That's why I'm saying uh, talk about your psychic powers. Well, but how? How do I do that? I don't know. Psychic <laughs> power. No, I well, mean, I, I think yeah, just kind of. Uh, uh, I, I was frightened. I was frightened of, of, of fucking it up. I was frightened of. I was intimidated by Willem, a big hero of mine. I was intimidated by because everyone, you guys can talk about like really clever books and stuff, and I don't know anything. <laughs> Literally, I don't know any of the references. <laughs> I was like, oh, I was, uh, yeah, but, um, but, but, and, uh, yeah, and also because I'm just, I'm sort of listening. I, I really, on the first day, I was watching Willem, and it's like, it was really spectacular watching him because Willem goes full power in rehearsals. And I was just, I could feel myself just reacting, like, because I'm reacting to it. And then I realized, well, I kind of like just reacting to it. And so, I don't want to sort of remember how I feel in this and then just try and do it again. And I don't want to invent something. And so I kind of realized the more, because we would rehearse the entire movie, and then at the end of the movie, just start the movie again. And, uh, and so I was like, Jesus, I, I'm really, really worried about having to fake it. And I don't know how. I don't know how to fake it, especially... I, I mean, know. you have trouble answering two Q and A questions the same night, so <laughs> know, I'm not know, in any way surprised that you would be like, "I don't want to act the know. movie again." I'm one and done. <laughs> <laughs> um, we gotta we gotta get out of here soon, and I want to get a couple of real questions, a couple more questions in. Um, Willem, I want you to talk about it because, again, if you guys can't guess, all of this research, all of the time that Max and Robert put into it to bring this sort of vivid thing to life, I'm sure there's some details that we can't pick up on screen. So were there any like knickknacks or props or something from the costume that you were like, what is this that Robert then decided to nerd out and explain to you? Mm, <laughs> lots of things. You know, the cutlery was actually, they found real lighthouse cutlery. <laughs> from a real lighthouse. Um, everything was, uh, no, it was a complete world. Uh, an example, there's a scene where you probably see me for about 10 seconds knitting. Well, guess what I did? I learned how to knit. <laughs> <laughs> now, maybe it sounds foolish because you're learning something that's only gonna be there for 10 seconds. and. Maybe you don't even notice whether I know how to knit. But that activity is a thing of the period. My grandfather was a champion knitter. It uh, sent me to another time, and I learned a new skill. And when you learn something, you have a little shift in how you think, and it opens you up to kind of make a new person. It suggests to you that you can have a different set of impulses, a different set of thinking. and then put you in a place that's not a world that you know, but it is very complete. And that's where you start, you know? You're born again in that character. You can inhabit that with some sort of authority because you start to create an experience of being in that space that you have an association with. And it's really, it's, it's a life. It's not a total life, but you get a taste of something really concrete. And when, when, uh, uh, a director is as meticulous and as uh, he has such a clear vision and needs these details, it helps an actor so, so much. Yeah. And I, like I'll say again, that's what we just saw. That is the result that we see on stage. That's why I'm like going to be screaming to everyone. I'm like, talk about this screenplay, talk about these performances, and talk about this film. I want to thank you guys so much for um, this you. conversation. Yeah. I want to thank all of you for listening. And uh, thank you again. Have a great evening. <laughs>